Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Steve, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, I'd like you to continue your series called A God Among MGTOW with Franz Kafka, one of the greatest writers in history. Kafka remained an unmarried bachelor until his death in order to create literary works of high value, and he said that all of his accomplishments were a direct result of him being alone in life. So he saw a deep link between being a bachelor and being an artist. Of particular interest are his countless love letters to some of the women that were interested in him as well. They seem to be narcissistic writing exercises. And Kafka was also very reluctant to meet many of his female correspondents in person, and often made excuses about it. It seems that he was using women to fuel his literary genius, but was unwilling to marry any of them. What do you think? Best regards. Well, Steve, thanks for your donation. And to be honest with you, I've never actually heard of Franz Kafka before you mentioned it. And I obviously don't have the time to read his works and give you a review about his writing. So instead I'll do an analysis of what I think motivated Kafka, and if he truly was a god among MGTOW. In my opinion, in the important ways, he did actually go his own way from women. But more importantly, he was also Jewish and decided to go his own way from his faith and culture. This is what he has to say about his alienation from Judaism and Jewish life. What have I in common with Jews? I have hardly anything in common with myself and should stand very quietly in a corner, content that I can breathe. And later on in his adolescent life, Kafka actually declared himself an atheist as well. He also proclaimed himself to be an existentialist. He was a man between two worlds, much like myself. And I was never fully embraced from people from my own Eastern European background, nor did I embrace them. I was also accepted by very few people in Western society in general. And I think that one of the first and most important ways a man can go his own way is if he does so from his own country or culture of origin. Alienation from a man's culture is one of the ultimate ways that you can go your own way. Nationalism and cultural values and traditions, I believe, are an extension of gynocentrism because women use men's own cultural background to get men to compete against one another and turn against each other as well. It's a way for women in one nation to indirectly fight the women in another group and basically use their own disposable males to do the job for them. And people tend to generally mate along ethnic lines as well, so women often take full advantage of this. If you're free of your cultural heritage, and you don't hang out with people from your own country of origin, then you have more freedom than most. I of course am speaking about immigrants here with regards to Western countries. Men that have gone their own way from their origins and choose to embrace a different culture. I am of course speaking about a time before multiculturalism. A time when people used to be part of the so-called melting pot. And that's exactly what Kafka does as well. Nikola Tesla also did the same thing when he moved to the United States and became an American citizen and chose to speak English with no foreign accent. But unlike Nikola Tesla, Kafka still got together with women, but on terms that seemed to be his own. He used to visit brothels throughout his lifetime as well as having a keen interest in pornography, and he was generally tormented by his own sexual desires. I think he's basically like many modern men going their own way because he acknowledged that his sexual desires existed and gave in to them. And also he had many girlfriends throughout his life, but he was also smart enough to know that getting married and having a family would destroy his ability to write new materials. Another way that he went his own way is with regards to his career. Kafka was originally a lawyer, and he worked as what we would regard today as a guy that basically figured out the numbers for the claims adjusters in an insurance company. So the adjusters knew the ballpark figure when it came to insurance claims. So ultimately, Kafka decided to go his own way from the financial security associated with being a lawyer, and instead decided to pursue becoming a writer. And that's the thing that most people don't understand about having a passion for something. It becomes a compulsion like an obsessive compulsive disorder or worse. People today say that having an obsession is a form of mental illness, but we need to remind ourselves that men that are the most obsessive and prolific are the ones that left their mark on the world. And Kafka even has this to say about obsessions. Don't bend, don't water it down, don't try to make it logical, and don't edit your soul down accordingly to the fashion. Rather, follow your most intense obsessions mercilessly. And as men, we usually know that one of those obsessions are actually women. And Kafka obviously followed that obsession as well, but his true passion was basically to become a prolific writer. Franz Kafka is also the product of the same society as the first god among MGTOW in my series, Nikola Tesla. He, much like Nikola Tesla, had the ability to describe things in a detailed way. And they were also born in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, too. And they also followed their obsessions. In the film The Prestige, Tesla is played by David Bowie, and he says, I know an obsession when I see one, and no good will come from it. And of course that line was written by the film's writer, instead of it actually being Tesla's own words. And I guess that's the one thing about obsessions that most men will never seem to understand. 
You see, I sit here day after day obsessing over female nature and the idea of men going their own way. And as many of you know, I can go out and take my writing skills and video skills and produce content about almost anything else. But instead, I choose to make a lot less money doing this instead because it's all about following my passions. Ironically, it's men that follow an obsession like Kafka and Tesla that someday have statues of them put up all over the world. Yet today, the medical establishment wants us to believe that obsessing over something is nothing more than mental illness. I would probably be classified as mentally ill by most therapists and would probably be given medication to make me a more rounded person. But enough about myself, let me get back to Kafka. As I started reading many of his well-crafted quotes, one popped right out like a sore thumb, and this is it. Isolation is a way to know ourselves, and it speaks wonders about the modern man. If modern men are not alone because they have their wives and children around them all the time, then they don't really know who they are inside. And that's the tragedy about being a man in general. But I should mention that Kafka did hold family and children also in high regard. And he also had many girlfriends in his life, but he just chose not to get married. This sounds a lot like many of the modern MGTOWs out there. Many of them are willing to have girlfriends, but as you said, Steve, his accomplishments are due to him being alone in the end. And I think that he knew it the same way that Tesla did. Men like them realize the full amount of time that women take from them for trivial things. So instead, they choose a life of complete isolation, or relative isolation, like Kafka did, because he still chose to have girlfriends. But he chose to have his biological urges fulfilled, even though he never committed to marriage. And with regards to Kafka's writings, many of the critics of the time called him things like the Dante of the 20th century, or one of the greatest writers of the 20th century. And although many people say that he was a socialist, his writing is very much about attacking the bureaucracy of government. Growing up in the Austro-Hungarian Empire and watching it decay all around him was certainly an influence on him. And seeing the socio-economic complexity crumble around him must have really changed who he was. He also inspired science fiction writers and films from the end of the 20th century. And I also enjoyed watching films like Terry Gilliam's Brazil, as well as Dark City, which were both inspired by him. Both films show the dangers of an overbearing bureaucracy, and ironically both films feature characters that go their own way and attempt to escape the insanity of what they see around them. And both films question the ideas of government control in humorous and ironic ways, much the way that Kafka wrote. Reading some of Tesla's ideas on artists in Bachelorhood, he said that artists and other creative types can actually benefit from having women around and being with women to inspire them. And Kafka being a prolific writer, while frequenting brothels, watching pornography, and having girlfriends, should have been an inspiration enough. Everywhere I look these days, I hear stories about having sex and how it kills a man's creative spirit. And I, for one, don't think that that's true. I think that a strong expression of male sexuality can actually lead creative types to produce more work and get more inspiration than they normally would. But Tesla didn't say that scientific types would actually benefit from having women around, only the creative men. And I know that in my own life, there are periods of time when I was in love with specific women, and for some crazy reason, my creativity was amplified tenfold. And that's what I also think happened to Kafka. Marriage and cohabitation are obviously a drain on a man's resources as well as his mind, and should be avoided at all costs. But maybe Tesla's right when he says that creative men need a muse or possibly even a female lover. What does everyone else think about this particular theory? Is there a place for a female muse out there? And does everyone think that Kafka's writings actually improved by him expressing his strong sexuality? To end today's video, I just want to say that Franz Kafka not only went his own way from traditional family and marriage, but also went his own way from his own cultural background, language, career as a lawyer, and instead decided to pursue his passions, which were writing and womanizing. Unfortunately, he also died at a relatively young age, of 41, and probably had at least two more good decades of work ahead of him. He died a gruesome death from laryngeal tuberculosis, and his throat swelled shut and became too painful to eat anything, and eventually couldn't get anything down his throat. And ironically, I could barely eat a couple of weeks ago due to a peritonsillar abscess. It's the same thing that ended up killing George Washington, but luckily for me there was a doctor there at the hospital to take a scalpel to the back of my throat and cure my problems. But not being able to eat properly for almost two weeks was basically brutal. I could only imagine what Kafka did at the end of his life knowing that he would die of thirst or even starvation. And it adds a whole new layer of meaning to the words starving artist. And much like Vincent van Gogh, Kafka didn't get famous while he was still living. Only after his death did the world posthumously discover the genius of his writings and acknowledge his accomplishments. And on a side note, even though my throat condition was really bad, somehow I still ended up managing to come home that day after that surgery and still do a video. If that's not an obsession, then I don't know what is. 
And I think that great things come from constructive obsessions and hobbies, and I wish that more men went their own way and followed their obsessions instead of going society's way and doing what they're supposed to do. Anyways, thank you Steve for your donation as well as topic suggestion. And as for everyone else, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the divorce lawyers away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.